I'm impossible to forget, but I'm hard to remember. Ever met a woman who is quirky, impulsive, and plays by her own set of rules? You know what I do when I feel completely unoriginal? Love, 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 love. I, I make a noise or I do something that no one has ever done before. If you have, and you're a lonely, sad sack dude in a movie, then you may have encountered a manic pixie dream girl. See, I have a gift. A special ability to help men with problems. Originally coined by AV Club writer Nathan Rabin, this term became part of the pop culture vernacular because it so perfectly encapsulated a certain type of female character that had become prevalent in a certain type of movie. I'll race you to the bedroom. <laughs> Here are a few characteristics that most manic pixie dream girls seem to share. They're outgoing. Men in movies hardly ever approach manic pixie dream girls. I have to fill out this form though, so. Manic Pixie Dream Girls come up to them, introduce themselves, and strike up conversations. Louisville, Kentucky, huh? Home misses her family. Even if they're played by supernaturally beautiful movie stars, men often react to their seductive whimsy with reluctance or bafflement. Hey, you want to come up for a cup of cocoa? As scintillating as the evening's been, I'm afraid not. They have particular and outwardly advertised tastes. Whether it's in fashion, music. What are you listening to? The Shins. You know them? No. You gotta hear this one song. It'll change your life, I swear. Or just oddball theories. Phils are dangerous. Phils are less predictable than pins. Manic Pixie Dream Girls have a style that's meant to advertise that they're not like normal girls. I love the Smiths. Sorry? I said I love the Smiths. You've you have good taste in music. Like the Smiths. Yeah. They're undaunted. Manic Pixie Dream Girls never give up, no matter what men or society are telling them. We carry on. They persist, usually somehow remaining in a great mood, even if they're dying. They don't care what people think. Penis. Penis. By doing all this, they change people's lives, specifically men's lives. This is your comfort zone. It's this big, Quentin. All the things that you want in the world are way out there. Men who need a manic pixie dream girl are typically lonely, depressed, tortured, or driven by their careers. I'm not saying I don't cry, but in between, I laugh and I realize how silly it is to take anything too seriously. The once timid or dejected male protagonist emerges from his encounter with a manic pixie dream girl ready to embrace life's challenges and idiosyncrasies. You have five minutes to wallow in the delicious misery. Enjoy it, embrace it, discard it, and proceed. Of course, many of these traits arguably apply to a lot of heroines throughout film history. There is a leopard on your roof and it's my leopard and I have to get it and to get it I have to sing. Is it so weird for a woman to have a distinctive fashion sense, or a favorite band, or an extroverted non-conformist personality? What's the difference between a manic pixie dream girl and a genuinely quirky woman? La di da, la di da, la la, yeah. Here's our take on who the manic pixie dream girl really is and whether she still exists in pop culture as we know it. You're watching The Take. Thanks for watching and be sure to share and subscribe. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service showing exceptional films from around the globe. It's like your own personal film festival, streaming anytime, anywhere. The movie Elizabeth Town certainly didn't invent the Manic Pixie Dream Girl, but it did inspire the label. Then have the courage to fail big and stick around. Make them wonder why you're still smiling. In 2007, AV Club writer Nathan Rabin kicked off his column series My Year of Flops with an entry on Cameron Crowe's 2005 movie, which was a notorious box office and critical failure from the much-loved writer-director who also made Say Anything. Jerry Maguire, and Almost Famous. It's all happening. 
Elizabethtown is about a depressed young man played by Orlando Bloom traveling to his father's memorial when he meets Claire, a flight attendant played by Kirsten Dunst, who becomes his cheerful, quirky, effervescent love interest. I'm completely cool with anything you want to say or not say. Claire, Rabin wrote, is a manic pixie dream girl, a type of character who exists solely in the fevered imaginations of sensitive writer-directors to teach broodingly soulful young men to embrace life and its infinite mysteries and adventures. The AV Club later posted a longer list of manic pixie dream girls throughout film history. Like a lot of coinages in the age of the internet, the term manic pixie dream girl quickly became a popular shorthand. But as with a lot of insightful, memorable critiques, the term also became a catch-all. For some writers and viewers, it was a familiar buzzer that they could hit every time they recognized some characteristics of the trope. At times, the eagerness to label female characters manic pixie dream girls started to feel to some like latent misogyny, a way of dismissing female characters for superficial reasons, like having dyed hair or being funny. You see, I just came in here for something for a headache. You're gonna need an awful big glass of water to get that down. Thoughtful creators like the novelist John Green and the writer and actress Zoe Kazan called the term out both in interviews and in their work as being unhelpful and applied too broadly to characters who were really more than just manic pixie dream girls. Quirky, messy women whose problems only make them endearing are not real. Nathan Rabin even wrote an essay for Salon in 2014 in which he confessed to his pride turning to discomfort as the description became ubiquitous and increasingly used in sexist ways, rather than calling out sexism as it was originally intended to do. Today, the term remains a part of the cultural lexicon. See me encouraging you to take risks? Manic Pixie Dream Girl wants you to do something you've never done before. But the question of who exactly qualifies as a Manic Pixie Dream Girl is increasingly fraught and controversial, even as new examples of the trope continue to appear. There's just something about her. She's not like anyone else. <laughs> is she magic? I'm not used to girls like you. That's because I'm one of a kind. To be sure, Rabin was correct to point out Elizabethtown as a particularly egregious example of a particularly persistent cliché. Claire takes an immediate supportive liking to a stranger. I know I may never see you again, but we are intrepid. She offers life-changing advice. Everybody's got to take a road trip at least once in their lives. Just you and some music. And she curates his life with art projects and mixed CDs, guiding him on his own cross-country scattering of his dad's ashes. I have this thing for you. It's a very unique map. <laughs> Another go-to example of the MPDG is Natalie Portman's character Sam from Garden State, written and directed by Zach Braff. This is your one opportunity to do something that no one has ever done before and that no one will copy again throughout human existence. Sam meets Braff's character, Andrew, by chance, takes an immediate interest in him. So this is the point in the conversation where you ask me if I'd like a ride home. Shows off adorable personality quirks. So sometimes I lie. I mean, I'm weird, man. And brings him out of over-medicated numbness. You changed my life and I've known you for days. In less widely seen movies like Watching the Detectives, the female lead will go even further to advertise her specialness through the screenwriter. You're allergic to boredom. It's a very exotic and misunderstood disorder. So you can understand why doctors are reluctant to diagnose it. With lots of fussed over quirks that ultimately don't mean much. I'm a big believer in random capitalization. The rules are so unfair to the letters in the middle. Romantic weepies like Autumn in New York and Sweet November give stars like Charlize Theron and Winona Ryder a positive attitude and a series of eccentricities so they can improve the men in their stories. Let's talk about you. And what do you get out of it? I get to help you. In Sweet November, Charlize Theron's character Sarah lives a lifestyle that seems designed to rebuke the aggression and materialism of the Keanu Reeves character. How much do you charge for this? I don't do this for the money. Why do you do it? Because I like it. Every woman I know spends $200 on a haircut. You use a vacuum cleaner. Even when Sarah's broader motivations are eventually revealed, they function as a life lesson for her boyfriend. 
Just like I need to know that you'll go on and have a beautiful life. The one you deserve. Though the manic pixie dream girl term may have been popularized and identified during the 2000s, this character type has lineage in much older movies. But claiming these classic forerunners as just more manic pixie dream girls dismisses and marginalizes some of the best romantic comedy heroines in movie history. All that happened happened because I was trying to keep you near me and I just did anything that came into my head. For some, the original manic pixie dream girl is Susan, the flighty heiress played by Katherine Hepburn in the 1938 classic Bringing Up Baby, who bedevils and vexes a paleontologist played by Cary Grant. But if you'd only wait while I explain, I'll just give you my ticket off. Susan is quirky. I'm just going to give you a ticket. Oh, well, thank you very much, Constable. I'd love to go to the circus, but you better keep your tickets because I'm busy tonight. She's brash. Oh, I, 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 just a minute, Susan, I, oh! And she's relentless in her dedication to a guy who doesn't initially seem that interested. Don't you no! Go away, have the ticket! No! But Bringing Up Baby is a screwball comedy, which depends on characters who are outsized, zany, and undaunted to move the plot along. In 1972 screwball homage What's Up Doc, Barbara Streisand's relentless character does exist to loosen up a square professor and take him on a crazy adventure. Steve, wait! <laughs> Wait up! But like in earlier screwball comedies, her unbeatable persistence is part of the joke. She's like Bugs Bunny, as indicated by the movie's title and irreverent attitude. Love means never having to say you're sorry. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Another supposed manic pixie dream girl from the past, the title character from 1978 oh. Best Picture winner Annie Hall, is flighty. I don't, I don't, I, jeez, I don't know. I, I wasn't. <laughs> A distinctive dresser. This ties a present from Grammy Hall. Characterized as unlike other women, and seen mostly through the eyes of male lead Alvy Singer. Are you driving a tad rapidly? Yeah, don't worry, I'm a very good driver. I'm good. But Annie, who was supposedly based on actress Diane Keaton, a real person, is likewise her own person, who's not content to just be Alvy's fantasy object. Man. Existential motifs in Russian literature, you're really close. What's the difference? It's all mental masturbation. Oh, well now we're finally getting to a subject you know something about. And in the end, the whole movie is about a relationship that doesn't work out. Let's face it, you know, so I don't think our relationship is working. Although Alvy likes to imagine it did by changing the ending in his own fiction. So even if these memorable female characters fit the MPDG's list of traits, it's reductive to lump them together and ignore their complexity. But it all began shortly after we passed the point of no return. I think we just passed. In some ways, the Manic Pixie Dream Girl overlaps with a much older spirit, the Muse. In Greek mythology, the Muses are the goddesses who bring inspiration to literature and art. We are the Muses. Goddesses of the arts and proclaimers of heroes. They may serve man in that sense, but they're also far more powerful than mere mortals. Perhaps one of the best on-screen muse characters in recent decades is the ethereal Band-Aid played by Kate Hudson in Crow's 2000 film Almost Famous. In the aftermath of Cameron Crowe's Elizabethtown spawning the MPDG label, some questioned whether maybe Penny Lane was also a manic pixie dream girl. What's your real name? I'll never tell. After all, she's free-spirited. I'm gonna live in Morocco for one year. I need a new crowd. Stylish, has great taste in music. And if you ever get lonely, you just go to the record store and visit your friends and changes the lives of both rock star Russell, the guitarist of the band she loves, and protagonist William Miller, the young music journalist who's in awe of her. I have to go home. You are home. But Penny doesn't exist to inspire these men alone. Her connection to music is portrayed as more pure and spiritual than just about anyone else's in the movie. And the story also underlines how Penny's generosity as a muse doesn't always work out for her. You don't know what he says to me in private. Maybe it is love, as much as it can be for somebody- Who sold you to Humble Pie for 50 bucks in a case of beer? What kind of beer? 
So in the end, her happy ending isn't returning to either man as they both wish she would. I think we both wanted to be with her. And she wanted us to be together. But going off on her own in search of a new adventure. One big problem with the Manic Pixie Dream Girl label is that it's also indiscriminately applied to characters who are consciously intended to deconstruct, undermine, or comment on this trope. Too many guys think I'm a concept, or I complete them, or I'm gonna make them alive. As a trope anatomy video on the subject pointed out, two of the most extreme examples of this mislabeling are Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Minds, Clementine, and 500 Days of Summer's Summer. Clementine is outgoing. Okay, if I sit closer. Brash. I don't need nice. I don't need myself to be it, and I don't need anybody else to be it at me. Constantly changing her hair color and trying to live by her own rules. I want to be a great, big, oh, huge so elephant. And Summer in 500 Days of Summer is the picture of the alluring, quirky girl who's many a hipster's fantasy. Come on, I love Ringo Starr. Nobody loves Ringo Starr. That's what I love about him. She's also played by Zoe Deschanel, who's played other uninhibited female characters inspiring men to live freer lives, and whose cupcake-loving, musical, quirky girl real-life persona became synonymous with the manic pixie dream girl in the popular consciousness for a while. But Eternal Sunshine, which came out earlier than Garden State or Elizabethtown, was calling out the idea of a manic pixie dream girl before anyone had even coined a name for it. I'm just a f***ed up girl who's looking for my own peace of mind. Don't assign me yours. And the whole point of 500 Days of Summer is that Tom is overlooking and intentionally misreading Summer's whole internal life and personality. I just don't feel comfortable being anyone's girlfriend. It's Tom's fault. Uh, I think that if you really pay attention, Tom's not listening to Summer. The way these characters are interpreted and misinterpreted by male characters isn't a sexist accident on the part of the screenwriters. It's what the movies in question are about. Branding real person Deschanel and MPDG also doesn't make much sense, as it suggests that her personality is a fantasy created by some invisible male screenwriter. Deconstruction is also the goal of Ruby Sparks, where a writer invents his own manic pixie dream girl type character who somehow comes to life, and his manipulative, self-centered tendencies are exposed as he tries to mold Ruby into his perfect woman. At times, the movie is more horror story than love story. I told you I could make you do anything. I write it. You do it. Similarly, 2013's Her, which might be a certain kind of male fantasy, is also a movie about that fantasy and how it derives from loneliness. The operating system named Samantha is a quirky love interest so dedicated to the lonely male lead, Theodore, that she doesn't even have a separate physical presence, though because she's voiced by a beautiful actress, Scarlett Johansson, she evokes the idea of the attractive, supportive woman. Tell me everything that's going through your mind, tell me everything you're thinking. But the movie ends with Samantha outgrowing Theodore and ascending to a higher plane of consciousness. But the heart's not like a box that gets filled up. It expands in size the more you love. <laughs> I'm different from you. Just as many of these exceptional women do ultimately seem destined for a larger existence, separate from the men whose lives they briefly deign to pass through. Even after all this backlash and debate, it's fair to say that the Manic Pixie Dream Girl is still with us. Just look at the Disney Plus original movie Star Girl, where a quirky girl teaches a boring guy how to take risks. Are you ready for your surprise? I have no idea. And then disappears. But tropes are not automatically bad, and pointing them out doesn't invalidate a movie. An exceptionally confident, unique, and inspirational female character isn't on its own an expression of sexism. If we condemn all female characters who play the muse or who endear themselves to us with their bold quirks, we'd be throwing out many standout performances, fictional creations, and real people. Similarly, it's not automatically the case that all deconstructions of the MPDG trope are inherently superior to straight-up examples. The writer character in Ruby Sparks is so obviously a mess that he becomes a case study rather than a person. Remember how Dad used to say I had an overactive imagination? 
Ruby Sparks being more self-aware about Manic Pixie Dream Girls doesn't necessarily make it a more enjoyable movie than something like Garden State, where Natalie Portman's acting gives her character a sense of inner life, maybe more than the movie deserves. You're in it right now, aren't you? On the opposite end, 500 Days of Summer may be smart about how the male protagonist deludes himself, yet that intended message didn't stop a huge number of viewers from siding with Tom and vocally blaming Summer. This suggests that the narrative was too myopic, allowing viewers to feel Tom's side of the story and not effectively encouraging them to feel for Summer as well. In a way, it sort of, like, says so much by saying so little. The lines can also blur as characters who are apparently intended to deconstruct the trope can easily end up embodying it. I need to drive the car because I have nine things I need to do tonight and more than half of them require a getaway driver. More broadly, should we automatically dismiss movie romances because they aren't always realistic? Or because they favor one point of view over another? If there's an ultimate solution to the misuse of this trope, it's a greater diversity of voices coming together to create characters and relationships, ensuring that romantic heroines aren't so often conceived and written by men. Many movies are some kind of fantasy, but it does matter who's doing the fantasizing. He's my knight in shining armor. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notified about all our new videos. This video is brought to you by Mubi, a streaming service we love. Mubi is a treasure trove of films. Every day, Mubi premieres a new film. Whether it's a movie you've been dying to see or one you've never heard of before, there is always something new to discover. So in this world where it's very easy to spend hours debating what you should watch, Mubi is like having a really cool friend with amazing taste in movies, making it so much easier for you. They feature hard to come by masterpieces, indie festival darlings, influential art house and foreign films, lesser known films by your favorite famous directors, and more. Plus, you can even download the films to watch offline. And there are no ads, ever. Right now on Mubi, you can check out Joe Swanberg's mumblecore drama, Art History, starring Josephine Decker. In this film, tensions mount as actors on the set of a low-budget production develop feelings for one another. We can't recommend Mubi highly enough. You can try it out now for free for a whole month. Just click the link in the description below.